look in the mirror Man, you're so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to do today is talk about something that we need to talk about. We need to address some of the issues with our young black men. We we need to shed some light on the destructive behaviors of our young black men because we want to see them succeed. We don't want to see them fail. And they are going through a whole lot of things right now, almost like an endangered species because so many people are frightened just at the appearance of a young black man. The young black man doesn't have to do anything wrong. It's just the fact that they see a young black man, they become intimidated by a black man's presence. So I want to make a video about that a little bit and see if I can um, bring some facts, data, and statistics in this reaction video. So let's go ahead and get to it. Give me a second as I pull it up on the screen for you. Yeah, then you put the music down a little bit for that. All right, let's get it. Black men, black men, black men, black men, black men. You got to learn how to control your mind and your emotions with all of this stuff. They, the, the tough man role is going to fuck your life up. Being homophobic going to fuck your life up. Not growing up and becoming a man when you're supposed to going to fuck your life up. You got all these things that'll fuck a, a young man up. This is what... Now, this is what we're going to talk about. Now, being homophobic, that's more of a choice, man. And the reason he's saying in his career, he cannot afford to be homophobic. I don't think anyone should be, you know, bashing anybody. But one thing he did say is trying to be a thug, trying to be a tough guy. You know, that would mess your life up. Not becoming a man when you're supposed to be a man, when you're like baby boy, when you're still relying on your mama, you're staying with your mama when you're 30 years old and stuff like that, 40 years old. Stuff like that is not good for young black men. Those are bad examples. So I'm going to put some facts, data, and statistics on the screen. I'm going to come back to Mr. Mike Epps. I'm glad that he took the time to actually address some of the black youth. And I'm going to put these statistics on the screen for you. One second. I want to dive deep into this. All right. Let me put it on the screen. We're going to read this together. Why is this important? Because according to the USA Today, black teens, youth, more likely to be killed or deleted after incarceration, a study found. So that means when you go to juvie or you go to prison, any type of form of incarceration for doing the wrong things, young man, there's a greater chance of you being murked or deleted in these streets because most times you don't separate from the negative influences that influence you to do the bad things. You have to stand out. In other words, you have to suffer. And people don't want to say it like this, but you have to suffer being rejected you have to suffer being ridiculed you have to suffer being called the one who isn't cool the lame and stuff like that just to protect your life not to get in a situation that can cause you to lose your life or to take away your freedom now let's keep going another study by the u.s today said that gun gun violence disparity young black men and teens are killed by guns 20 times more than their white counterparts and that came from the cdc so black men and young black men are killed 20 times more than their white counterparts that's un- that's very unacceptable and when you have rap music that promotes the extermination of black men by other black men that's it leads to that another thing now according to this my class i don't need to Nationally, the youth placement rate was 74 per 100,000 in 2021. Talking about going to jail. The black youth placement rate was 228 per 100,000 compared to the white youth placement rate of 49% per 100,000. 42% of youth in placement are black, even though black Americans comprise Only 15% of all youth across the United States. That's black, young black youth going to jail, being incarcerated for something wrong, getting a jail record, going to juvie. Another one. What percentage of black youth are, excuse me, 
What percentage of black youth are incarcerated? According to OJJDP, also notes that 41% of incarcerated young people are black, despite making up only 15% of the adolescent population. Put differently, for every 100,000 black youth, 315 are in custody. And for every 100,000 Latino youth, 92 are in custody, compared to 72 white youth per 100,000. Now think about that. Look how far the black young men have beat out the Latino and the white people when it comes to being incarcerated. Out of every 100,000 black youth, there is at least 315 of those young men in jail right now. We got to stop trying to be the tough guy. We got to stop trying to be the cool guy. We got to start understanding and appreciating ourselves and understand that we are the catch, we are the prize, and that we are destined for greatness. And you have to see yourself as someone great before you become great. And you have to believe it. And a lot of times you have to cut people off. You got to get away from people, young man, because if you don't, you can die inside jail. Not because they gave you a life sentence, but because you got shanked. And then it says when you come out, you're 20 times more likely to be deleted in these streets. This is something that needs to be addressed. I'm going to go back to uh, Mike Epps now. We're just going to ride it out. Excuse me as I pull it up on your screen. The right way, baby. There we go. Not growing up and becoming a man when you're supposed to going to fuck your life up. You got all these things that'll fuck a, a young man up. This is what this is what fucks a young man up. I was a young man, a light-skinned young man around dark-skinned men. You know what kind of fight that is in yeah. a fucking black community? I do. That shit ain't no joke. That's another thing I can't stand. This light-skinned black person against a dark-skinned black person. We both black. That come, that came all the way down. From, you know I'm not no person that believe in racist stuff that I don't blame a white man for shit. I, you know that. I do acknowledge systemic racism, but I don't say if you're out in these streets right now and you decide to rob a McDonald's that it was a white man's fault. That was an individual choice. That's you. No white man told you to go in there. But when it comes to this light-skinned and dark-skinned thing, it is proven that that method was taught through the Willie Lynch theory, the Willie Lynch letter. If you don't know what that is, look it up online. Where they turn slaves against each other, the lighter against the darker, the strongest against the weakest. It's division. Okay, so that is a real thing. That is systemic in a way. But it's still an individual choice for you to act that way. But I don't like the fact that black people don't like each other because one is a different shade from what they are. That is some of the most dumbest shit. And I'm going to be honest with you, that is also racism. That's also racism if you never thought about it. Because when you say white men don't like black men because they're black, when you say that um white men don't like Latinos because they white, or you when you because black people are racist too. When you say black men don't like white men because they're white, you always say that's racism. So what is it when there's a black man who don't like another black man because he's lighter? What is it when you have a black woman who don't like a lighter shade of black woman because she's blacker? It's racism. It's still racism all the time. Okay? It's prejudice and racism. That's stupid. Let's keep going. That's why when you go to the penitentiary, you run into all these light-skinned killers. Bunch of light-skinned. I'm talking about, man, you look like I'll be sure. Yep, I got life without parole, bro. You know what I mean? Because somebody might have touched him when he was a kid that made him a monster. You see what I'm saying? This is what the kids need to hear right here. Yeah. You want to hear some shit? That's some shit you need to hear. You're celebrating and you're, 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 you're looking in the wrong areas. You got to know what you're dealing with, man. This is life. Exactly. You're looking in the wrong areas. A lot of young black men look for acceptance and belonging in gang. They look for it in thugs in those streets. They just want to be popular. It's unfortunate that in our community, black youth place popularity over survival. So like on um, some situations, you have to get in the game, depending where you're at, to survive. There are communities like that, because if you don't join the gang, you're going to get picked on and beat up and maybe shot. And that's true. But I'm not talking about those instances. I'm talking about the fact you choosing to join the gang, choosing to do, um, to sell illegal 
narcotics when you come from a well-off family or you don't have to do it. You just do it because you want to be a thug. Look at T.I.'s son, for example, King. T.I.'s son wants to be a thug and a gangster so damn bad, and he's born with a single uh, silver spoon in his mouth. He comes from wealth. Mama, mama got money, rich, T.I., rich, and he always tried to be a hood dude. Try to make struggle meals and post it online. Um, look it up. He made some ramen noodles one time and put it into some aluminum foil that he put a lot of, and he rolled the foil into the shape of a bowl and put ramen noodles in it and said, it's hard out here. It's hard out here. Here it is. You're living in a multi-million dollar home. That's what I'm talking about. You're looking for belong um, acceptance from the wrong people. You want the respect of people who are already fucked up and ain't going nowhere in their lives. Okay? That's not where you need to go. That's not where your headspace needs to be. Let's keep going. You're 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 looking in the wrong areas. You gotta know what you're dealing with, man. This is life. You know what I'm saying? It it if don't nobody teach you, life itself is gonna teach you. It'll whoop your ass and make you humble, calm you down, settle you down. It'll do all of that to you. Talking like you've been through it. it, it, it I, I've been through. Hey, I've been on drugs. I've been through hell. You know what I'm saying? I did most of the movies on cocaine. All about the Benjamins. I was, man, I used to sit in Ice Cube's trailer in the morning and be crying, tears. He like, Mike, wipe your, wipe your face, man. You a king, nigga. Stop doing this shit to yourself. I'm sitting there wiping myself. Cause I was really, 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 I was really, I had survivor's remorse. I was so sad that I left all them niggas here in this city and I was famous. And when I would come home, I wanted them to be happy for me. And they was mad at me. So I said, damn, I got to destroy myself for you to like me. I was like, damn, my favorite nigga, it seemed like he liked me more when I'm coming down off coke and I'm crying and I hate myself. He was like, oh man, I love you, nigga. I'm praying for you. But when I wasn't high and I was working out and I looked good, he's like, nigga, you think you better than me. That's what you have to understand, young man. You have to leave the hood alone. The streets don't love nobody, okay? And he said the truth. People always tell you how much they love you when you're down and out, but when you get up and you're doing good, they don't like you no more. People find pleasure in your suffering, okay? And he said that he felt he had to destroy himself for people to like him. That's an insecurity, you know what I mean? A lot of us want to belong. When As you age, you're going to find that you're going to separate from a whole lot of people that you used to be cool with. And one of the things that's going to separate you from everybody else is success. Success. When you're trying to do something, people are not going to be able to ride the same ride with you. You got to drop some of them motherfuckers off so you can go ahead and be successful. It just is what it is. All right. You have to realize everybody don't have your best interest at heart. Okay. That's just the truth of it. I guarantee some of the people that you say are your day one friends, my ace boom coon, got all kind of love for me. Start doing good in life and see if that if you still feel the same way. See if they still show you the same sentiment. Success has a way of putting a wedge between quote unquote friends. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to learn how to cut people off and be fine with that. You have to be cool with saying, fuck them. I don't care. But you owe us, man. We don't owe nobody owes nobody shit. That's a sense of entitlement. The same sense of entitlement that we complain about that we find in women. Okay. You don't owe nobody. You owe yourself. You owe your family. You owe your God your best. That's what you owe. That's it. You are not required to do things to make other people happy outside of that um, circle I just mentioned. Unless you want to be generous, unless you want to be kind and charitable, then you can do that. But you always got to put yourself first. You put yourself before a woman. You put yourself before everything. It's your life. Sometimes you got to put yourself before your mother and your father. You can still love them. But you have one life to live. You have to put yourself first. The only one that comes before you is God. And this ain't no religious program. If you're religious, you understand. If you're an atheist, then you don't have to pay attention to what I'm saying. That's up to you. But I believe that you put God first. Now, you don't got to be perfect either. But that's the only ones, y'all. Let's keep going. I said, nigga, how is my success a reflection of your, your failure? And that's what happens to the kids. They around here killing themselves, trying to fit in with somebody who's fucked up. That's the truth. Now, I'm a comedian. We supposed to be laughing. 
I've been laughing the whole time. Yeah. If y'all want to see the rest of that video, y'all go find it on my hips. But I just want to take some parts of that seem to be very important that would really apply to the young black men. Now, you know how I get down. If you like this video, hit the like button, of course, and all that good stuff. Until then, I'll talk to you later. Take it easy now, you hear me?